Hello and welcome back guys to the Eon Drive Tournament. I am in the Commodators booth with unknown availability. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It sounds like I'm going to be taking the same stance and saying, Aeon, you're going to be the Eon, and I am okay with that. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got a top of thir uh, top 32 match here with SCP-105 and Game Guy SD. Uh, the winner of this match will go on to face 28 Kotak in the top 16. So uh, this will be the last match of today, but ladies and gentlemen, do not fret. We are going to have more matches coming out throughout the next few days. Of course, Sunday, tomorrow, we will have more matches coming at you. So, um, but right now, this is this is going to be a great match, man. This this game is something else. I've, I've been watching it all day, and the more I see of it, the more I'm, like, addicted to the speed run of it. It's so fun to watch the, the teleportation dagger being so critical and, and fast and just integral to how well these runners are going to be able to figure out how fast to make it through each level oh yeah absolutely it's it's been great and, and i know speedrunners kind of get a, a a jab when when people talk about them and they're like you just play the same game over and over again but um but this this um setup right here shows exactly why it is fun it is enjoyable to do that because there's all these little optimizations you could do especially um with with eon drive here it is You've got the the warp dagger, you've got dashes, you've got a sword, uh, and then you have enemies to maneuver around, obstacles, all this stuff. And you and you just see all the different mistakes and optimizations they do. But yeah, 30 minutes on this timer here, round to 32, so they got a lot of time to really um, scope out this map, get their uh, precision down mechanics, and, and just really kill it. And it looks like this one has a lot of moving objects, which we mentioned it in the last one, um, if you guys were here. But moving objects kind of introduce a new spectrum into the uh, game here because like you see here like they're not able just to run straight through it they kind of have to wait uh if they're not on time so it just introduces something really different um into the game that we haven't quite seen today exactly and in the the moving object thing the the fact that the the saw that we have here is stopping the dagger it, it actually pretty much kills the dagger and you have to either find a faster method or find a or you have to wait like really and waiting is just not an option you know we we don't want to wait and wait for it to go by or anything of that nature they're probably going to want to do a lot of the uh the uprights downrights to get over that uh second saw um dash underneath the first one um but they're going to take their time they're going to look and see what they can do they're going to try to find the the fastest method in the spots that are stopping them so uh warning track asked me this i'm gonna ask you this if you were to speed run this and you were to speed run these levels how would you take them what would be your method would you be the more get through it and finish the level a few times first or would you just um reset in the middle and constantly try to redo one spot how would you actually go about figuring out each level yeah, my, met my methodology uh, would probably be to run through the level, see what my game plan will 100% be. Um, kind of do that a few, like a couple times, kind of practice the the shots, and then once I know what I want to do, I'll I'll probably just keep doing it and resetting until it's like really smooth and, and solid. Um, and so we, we saw a mix of that earlier today. Uh, as you know, some runners would would make a mistake, uh, and if it wasn't a big one, you know, maybe they continue, but then they made a, another one or a big one after that, and they just reset. Um, and they're like, nope, do it again. Time to get something better. And then we saw some they would just continually finish the run because they wanted to get that in-game practice in. Um, and so what ends up happening is you know they end up <laughs> being better at the end. So once they get the beginning down, they can kind of rush through it versus the ones who keep resetting, uh, which is w probably what I would do get really consistent at the beginning so they get more to the end at the end um, and so we're seeing those two different styles I think um, maybe there could be more but those are two big ones that we keep seeing um, so I'm not sure how exactly it plays out as far as one being better than the other and right now we're seeing that from game guy we're seeing the final seconds and he's looking at the or they rather I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, he in this instance but what we've got going on is finding the last seconds and seeing at the very end what we can do to get past the 
really, you don't want to wall jump. Wall jumping is almost your slowest method. So using the dagger to go up at the angle and then get one wall jump rather than multiple wall jumps. So it's it's interesting to see. And really, SCP just taking a full-on drop at the end there in the middle right there is interesting because that is a just one big solid fall. I, I'm surprised to see that actually taking a, a play rather than any kind of downward movement with the dagger. Yeah, the dagger absolutely being the most fastest way to... the most fastest <laughs> way to move around in the stage. Um, but yeah, you also, you also got dashes, dashes, and like you are saying, the wall jumps are, are not very quick. If, if you have to go through a corridor and you have to do it, then you know, it's whatever. But uh, it is, it's not what you want to do. You might see some of them like kind of catch corners here and have to do an extra jump. That is absolutely wasting time, and they try to uh, minimize those as much as possible. So I'm trying to avoid extra wall kicks. All right, closer look here on SCP. Really trying to figure out this section here. Some two, you know, moving saws there really complicates that area. Looks like it could be really quick though. Yeah, this, this this level in particular has a lot of um, possible variation where you can go. The top route might be faster if you can optimize where you're throwing that dagger. The, the thing about it I'm noticing is really coming down to the middle and the very end. And that very end where they have the two saws in the ground and the two saws in that left wall is really taking a huge just stopping point because they need to dagger quick and then get out of there because they don't have much time to sit there on the ground. There's also that one corridor that they fall down that has the two da uh, the, not dagger, excuse me, two saws that are closing in as well that you can't just fall normally because they're going to pinch you in and you're going to end up dying. So that's, it's, I'm going to be very interested to see who figures out first the right optimization to get past those. And we're seeing yeah. another super jump there from Game Guy, possibly figuring out where to go and going up higher, seeing if that's an option. Yeah. Perhaps. We just saw Game Guy really crush. I don't think we've updated the time. He finished with 21-something on the timer. Uh, I don't think we updated his best, but he just flew through whatever he was doing. That was pretty incredible. Um, Looks like so, 8.95 on yeah. there, so that's so, a real good time. That's um, that's the first sub-10 seconds that we've seen and it's, so far on the song. And, and it's a sub-9. <laughs> it's a... It was a huge gain, and, and especially over SCP right here, who is sitting with a 13.9, but he's still trying to figure it out. But uh, having that early time in um, is a really nice buffer here for Game Guy. Gives you a little bit more of a of a time to figure out the more finite optimizations, and honestly, Game Guy finding that little crevice, so to speak, in between the platform there's this little section this little diagonal between a platform and a full wall that they aimed through that they were able to use their dagger in um that's that's clever i like seeing that uh I, really it's coming down to like the thing that's so fun about watching this is you've got till still 22 and a half seconds or 22 minutes and a half and 30 seconds on the clock right now Every bit of that can be used. It, it's going to come down to where everything is going to be sub 10 seconds. And every minute is going to give you multiple attempts. So even if we get down to the final minute here, there's going to be any any amount of time for either one of these runners to catch up and take the lead. Yeah, absolutely. And you said that every single uh, second that is on this timer will be able to be used. So you can be in the lead the entire time. And then, you know, so Game Guy can have this time. Holds the entire time. SCP finals run beats it. So yeah, you're never out. That's what's so awesome about this uh, setup here. Is it's good until the end. Absolutely. And um, you know, if you're liking what you see and you think this is a very interesting looking game, by all means, September 
30th. This game will be coming out on all your favorite platforms. Go wishlist it on Steam. Uh, keep your eyes out peeled for it on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox. It's um, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun to play on every platform. Um, it feels so smooth on the controller. I I was messing around with it with a, even a Super Nintendo controller of all things. Um, and even though I didn't have every bit of use at my disposal, um, getting a super jump again out of Game Guy going through the top route, I wonder if that's going to end up giving us a faster time or not. That's I love that super jump. I, I didn't even know that existed until watching a, a few players do that. That's so cool to see. Yeah, it really is, that mechanic. And when the game comes out, they said there was going to be like over a hundred levels to do. So there's going to be... I, I'm ready for like some sick mechanic to come out that people start doing and they're like, um, like that, like a quick dash and a jump gives you like, like a quick boost of speed and, and you can jump a little bit higher. Um, so small, like tiny optimizations like that on so many different maps, um, and stuff. It's going to be a really cool time, um, uh, discussing with, with everyone else who gets the game about what strategies, what levels, you know, what routes can be optimized. SCP having a really good run there. Unfortunately, hitting that that little floating enemy there. I do not know in the names of the enemies yet in this game. Um, but hitting that floating enemy instead of going past him with the dagger, and almost getting a really solid time. That might have been a close time to what Game Guy already has. Oh! Oh hey, my! Excuse me? <laughs> Game Guy, what are you doing? <laughs> what was that? Um, I, uh, I think that was a, uh, out of bounds, almost. I, <laughs> I, 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 clipping through the wall, was he throwing his dagger over and over to, like, keep warping? Is that what happened? I don't no. know, but that was can't even tell really you. funny. I, I appreciate that heavily, because, I, again, the dagger is so quick because you can sit there and if you're falling into a pit and you have the ability to throw the dagger upwards, you can constantly throw it and teleport to it and save yourself from dying. So in a, in a casual sense, it really is just an interesting mechanic to stay alive. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you saw like the preciseness of what he was just trying to do here. He just threw his dagger through like the tiniest little hole to, to gain some time so he didn't have to like maneuver up some stairs and all that good jazz. So you can, I mean, that, that little display right there, I mean, just shows you how precise these runners are trying to be to save those few frames, few seconds, whatever it needs to be. Oh man, that's funny. Uh, chat saying game guy is becoming more powerful each run soon. Walls will no longer be in an obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> that That is, uh, I, I wonder how that even happened and if that was something that game guy found previously, because, um, They've not. I don't know if they've seen this level yet or not. I'm pretty sure they have not, because um, a lot of these levels are have. Yeah, they definitely have not seen this level. So, some of these levels were available so they can get used to the the controller and the mechanics. So they know exactly how the mechanics of the game work. But the levels themselves are fresh. They are not something they were able to practice beforehand. So that's why you're seeing it live here, being practiced and being done. It, it's it's funny to see that game guy found a way to get into the wall. I don't know if that's something that was done on a previous instance that they've played or not, but I'll be, I'll be interested in keeping my eyes out to see what that actually, uh, what comes yeah. out of that. <laughs> yeah, probably wasn't necessarily intended when he did it, but um, it was really, really cool to see regardless. But yeah, I mean, that this being a new map is actually really cool, I think. Uh, we get to watch the whole process them trial and error kind of mapping it out look, looking at different parts of the map really zoning in their their movement here because um, it still looks like, like neither one are 100 percent sure that they want to stick with one thing or the other you, you see them like kind of especially if they make a mistake they'll stop at a section and be like okay what can i actually do here to make it like really quick and these these moving saws are making it so much harder because every time they get to a section if it's not on pace or at least the same pace the saws are in a different place so right. this is going to be, this is something that it's like, it's not just one movement thing and you're like, oh, I'm good. It's like, you have to really be paying attention. And I'm wondering if, uh, if either one of the runners are going to 
possibly try to do an upright throw at the very end and hit that ledge that's above the ending teleporter because it looks like you can possibly get it, but I haven't really seen either one of them try to hit it. So I don't know if that's going to be something we're going to see. Yeah, I'm not sure. S SCP had a great run there and just like threw the dagger at the saw. Unfortunate there. Uh, but yeah, this end section, you could see it. Like SCP, there's that floating enemy up top. There's those two saws. And even if you get on the timing, like the floating enemies in your way, it seems like a really rough section. Both runners are kind of toying with yeah they're they're both going at that section very very hard because it's literally the biggest obstacle with the floating enemy and the two souls at the beginning or rather at the end because it's there's a lot of room for error and very little room for for actual throwing the dagger because if you throw the dagger in the wrong spot you're immediately dead there's just no way around that yeah, it's rough, it's tricky. Uh, maybe, okay. Game guy may be figuring something out here. And I'm noticing SCP is really trying to get, like, almost frame-perfect wall jumps to get the better time. Um, and you'll notice that whenever SCP gets to that wall, sometimes just won't jump and land, because literally going for almost a frame-perfect perfect jump, it's... it's probably more about the precision than it is about just holding left and then jumping, which, understandably so, you're trying to go as fast as possible. Yeah, precisely. It can be real, real tricky getting all those optimizations in. And, yeah, and the wall kicks are more like a, um, a Super Mario Odyssey versus, like, a Super Mario 64, uh, where the wall kicks, you know, it's not like a, an instantaneous second... You know, they're like the, the very moment you think it might hit the wall, it hits the wall. Like you kind of have to grab the wall in order to kick off of it, uh, which does make sense. You know, you don't just like kick the wall with all your force and <laughs> you kind of grab onto it and push. Right. Yeah. You, you've got a, a physics element to it where you actually do have to grab that wall. It's not like on SM64 that does have that first D mechanic where you can get it really almost before he even touches the wall. Yeah. So some, some good mechanics there. A decent run, decent run, right at the end when we zoomed in. But looking at the leaderboard, yeah, it's like over two seconds off. That's insane. Yeah, and I mean, SCP, I think, is, is taking a lot of time in certain areas and not really trying to, like, piece it all together right now. Still trying to figure out certain sections to, to get it done faster. Because two seconds is a lot, but we still have 13 and a half minutes. So there's more than enough time for SCP to just lock in one tight run. Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah, there's plenty of time on the board. Uh, you, you just see you see Game Guy here still like mapping stuff out and struggling. So it's not like, you know, the time is unbeatable. Um, but yeah, SMP got, needs to, uh, or SCP needs to uh, really get something clean going. But it looked like you've kind of figured out at the end. Um, before we, we zoomed in here to Game Guy. Oh wow, Ga Game Guy literally just went through and nailed a bunch of quick movements all the way up to the very end. And again, this final spot with the two saws and that flying enemy is just causing a lot of head pains here. And ugh, like I, it's stopping both runners in their tracks and keeping them from really locking in that super tight time. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that the first runner that gets that final section down is going to have a sub-8, if not sub-7 second time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Game Guy is saving his times here. Like, I, I, I don't know how precisely y'all are, are watching the um, dagger throws, but this throw right here, he's, he's throwing it through that little gap, like, every time. It's insane. Yeah, that is a, that is such a tight throw too. That that win, window there is not. He's getting it such a way that literally being a pixel too far forward, you end up hitting the the left side of the platform rather than going through the hole. So it ends up messing up the whole run. But when he hits it, it's like 
if he gets past that last spot, that's going to be a really fast time. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Game Guy has that section figured out more. SCP has the ending figured out, it looks like, a little better. Um, I, I don't know if we'll get to the end here. Hopefully we can see it. He gets to the end, and yeah, one throws it here and then does a wall jump. So that's a little different than what Game Guy is doing. It looks like he's throwing, it has like an extra dagger throw in there somewhere. So maybe not quite as smooth. Uh, maybe SCP can use that to his advantage. Exactly. And the, um, I'm wondering if, if SCP is going to find that optimization. Oh, wow. What did, did Game Guy just get a. I don't know what that time was. I don't see. either. That Yeah, that was a very. It might have just been towards the end. I was looking at SCP whenever I saw Game Guy, like, nail that ending. Um. Because SCP is not using that little section that Game Guy is using, but SCP is getting... He's aiming towards the very top of the of the second saw on the left wall. So whenever they hit that, they're above both saws. They don't have to really... It doesn't really matter too much about the next angle, and they can get over to the portal really easily. So, um... Actually, Game Guy has a very interesting strat, too. Up and then yeah. left and then wall jump to the right. So yeah, I missed the I missed the up part. Maybe that's where I was thinking the extra throw was. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be much slower at all. So perhaps SCP does not have the advantage. It's hard to say. I, I again, even though SCP is technically behind by a couple of, by a second oh, and a half or so. That run was nasty. I don't know if that was his best time, but gosh, game guy. He's consistently getting eight second times now. Yeah. He's gotten a few of them. Yeah, it's 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 coming down to where it's constantly getting eight seconds time eight second times. SCP will probably knock out a sub ten, but they gotta they gotta piece all this together. We're below ten minutes, um, but that's more than enough time to get a very good run together and and lock in a time that's just gonna be really close. I don't, I don't think it's going to be too far-fetched for SCP to lock together one of these really solid runs. Nah, he, he can get something something pretty good. Definitely sub-10. Um, he's, But again, I mean, he's over a second behind now. I mean, Game Guy has that extra throw in the beginning, which I think is saving him half a second to a second um, with that teleport dagger. Um, the, the little gap right here, that gap is saving him so much time over SCP. Because if you watch SCP here, he'll he'll just dash through it. Uh, and I think that's where that like extra second is coming from. So he, I think SCP needs to figure that out, or Game Guy might have just, you know, got, gotten the formula and then executed it. Okay, SCP is doing something different now. Maybe he's realizing that maybe, maybe he, he's not going to be able to make up as much time as he wanted to. One thing I'm noticing that uh, Game Guy's doing is really using cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, a lot more in certain areas where they'll do the quick up and down throw, or up, rather up and then left throw, or up and then right throw. Like at the very end, Game Guy's doing that to just avoid wall jumps altogether until the very last wall jump. So I, that's that's a very interesting method there that they're using, and I like to see it. That's um, it's very unique. Which they're getting really close to their 825 again. Uh, they're looking like they're about to break their 825. They're really close to doing it. Yeah, it's 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 coming down to the wire here for for Game Guy if he wants to get that sub eight or not. But yeah, he, I mean he's looking super smooth. He really is. Seven seconds to go. Is SCP going to be able to figure something out? Seven minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, seven minutes. Seven seconds. <laughs> not enough time. Listen, seven seconds is also... It, we're, we're talking seconds and minutes here because there's seven minutes on the clock, but it's pretty... These levels are being finished in seconds, so yes. that's that's insane. The, the This game is so fluid and so amazing to watch and again if you're wanting to be able to figure some of this stuff out yourself september 30th all your favorite platforms xbox playstation steam and switch 
Uh, you can go ahead and wishlist it on Steam. Uh, when it comes out, you'll be ready to go and you'll get the notification. And you can casually play through this. It does have a story element to it. Um, crash landing a ship and then collecting the fuel cells to power the ship. Uh, you have a futuristic outlier. Uh, Two Awesome Studio has made another game before. I do not remember the name. Uh, Warning Track that, uh, had pointed that out. And this is kind of a spiritual successor of sorts to it where um, there is the mechanic of somewhat of a teleportation like this in the other one. But this one is just fine-tuned. It's really, really fun to watch. Really fun to play, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think all the casters got a little um, early access to it so we could really figure out the game. Um, so we could see it at least, you know, before coming out here and talking to you guys about it. Um, but my ex my experience was was, you know, top notch. It's it's a really fun game. Um, it's right on the verge of what I like to do anyway, which is speed running, figuring things out. Um, that's why I've enjoyed, you know, commentating this, um, especially this match right here with you. Brand new level, brand new tactics. Uh, it's it's just I, I love watching it just as much as I do like talking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, been, it's been super fun. The one thing that I noticed when I was playing it was, again, how just smooth the controls were. They were not choppy. I didn't feel like I ever lost control of my character or my character never did what I was wanting them to do. It was always just immediate response times and, and that felt so good. It felt so satisfying to finally get a really good dagger throw and a really good dagger tell too. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of mechanics involved too. You'll watch um, when they throw a dagger to a wall, they either can do a long uh, a wall jump, um, they can hug the wall, or if they hold neutral, they'll just drop straight down. And actually holding neutral after daggering a wall is very important because holding onto it will waste time. And you can see Game Guy right here, an incredible time, number one. That was awesome. Number two, he's not grabbing any walls as he throws a dagger onto him, if you pay attention. Uh, and so he's he's physically holding the stick neutral every time he's touching uh, a flat wall with the, with the teleportation dagger. So, I mean, this so, like, the skill cap is, is pretty insane. And one thing I just saw Game Guy do... Um, one, did the thing I was talking about, doing the upright and grabbing that ledge that's above the teleporter. And then, also, right here, at the spot that we keep mentioning with the floating enemy and the two saws, there's that little ledge that is below the ceiling that when Game Guy goes through the little corner here, throws and grabs that ledge and then falls neutral like you said and then hits the other wall on the right side to go past the saws so it really does just speed that much up it's so precise in that section yeah no hesitation no nothing you just gotta you have to know the timings of the teleport dagger you gotta know your stick positions and you have to execute it before falling too far to miss the throw and like hit that dagger right there. I mean, it, it's just what he's doing here is really incredible. It really is. And we're coming close to three minutes. Um, I'm going to be hitting three minutes in the middle of my sentence. And that's going, it, it's really coming down to the wire where SCP is going to have to really piece together all the sections that they're finding to be able to speed things up. And at the end of each finish, you see the leaderboard, and you the, the runner can see the time of the other of their competitor, so they know where they stand. Um, SCP understands that they are they're a couple seconds behind, so they know that they're going to have to finish a run and really piece together all the things that they have found so far. So, um, if I'm SCP right here, I'm probably feeling a little bit. What am I missing? I need to find the thing that speeds it up. What it what is not what's not clicking here that's getting me to the eight second, seven second time frame. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we were talking about earlier. I mean Game Guy has have found that one extra tactic, which is threading that little gap right here as you see on the screen. And, and that really is just making it so hard for SCP to come in. And I mean, seven seconds for Game Guy sitting at a 10 flat for SCP. SCP's doing well. He's not doing bad. Game Guy's just being, 
I guess game guy and being insane. Yeah, that and that's the thing too is you know this is this is single elimination and you know loser goes home, winner moves on. Um, there, there's one winner, there's one loser. It's just the way tournaments go. So the the time that SCP is getting is not bad by any means. I mean, heck, it's better than I can do. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know. I, I'm not not even acting like it's a bad time. It's just Game Guy has found that one thing that has just inched forward in the timer, because that that little section cuts off actually a, a good second and a half, and that's the difference. Because instead of having to fall and land and then throw, it is a quick double throw to get forward, and that's that's exactly it. So it's the upright, immediate right, and then another right as they're falling to get past all of that danger. So yeah. it it's just boom, just like oh. that. But <laughs> it, uh. he's, it, so he's been killing the enemy. When you throw the the teleportation dagger, if it hits an enemy, it just comes back to you and kills the enemy. So he's actually been throwing it twice there, but he was able to get there quick enough. Missed the enemy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, if he would have gotten that throw, like that's that's another half second that he's found off of the seven point eight that he has. Yeah. So in, in if if he does it a l just literal millisecond too late, the enemy's in the way. So when he teleports, he ends up getting hit by the enemy. So, so it's it's a very uh, it's threading the needle. It's threading the dagger, so to speak. So. Yeah, absolutely insane. And that's zero seconds on the time. Um, and so that's going to do it here for Game Guy and SCP. And man, what what a display from Game Guy. Because he, he really has pulled it out with that, with that trick and execution. Just able to keep getting it and getting it and getting those, you know, final... Uh, or getting, getting those extra attempts at the final area, uh, which I think really did it for him was able to get all those extra attempts after finding the fastest route. Absolutely. So Game Guide moves on to the top 16. That is going to be sending them on to face 28 Code Talk in that top 16. But that's going to be all for today for the Eon slash Aeon Drive tournament. Tomorrow we will be back at uh, noon central, um, 1 o'clock Eastern with more top 64 matches and top 32 matches. So um, thank you everybody for showing up today and don't forget, wishlist this on Steam, September 30th, it's gonna be out. Um, it's actually gonna be coming out right towards the, uh, towards the end. It's going to be coming out the day before the tournament actually ends. But um, you know, everybody's gonna be ready to play this alongside of our, our winners, our runners here. So um, shout out to Awesome Studio for putting out such a great game. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you. Um, and thank you again. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Good night, guys. Absolutely.